Hey y'all, it's me back with another video. Okay, this pillow is gonna get on my nerves. Okay, so um, I told you guys that I was going to come in with a lesson about Papa Legba and again since um, there's a video that I made that is two years old and it is getting a lot of attention since the situation with the young girl in Virginia. I have not went back and uh, looked at that video, but I'm pretty sure that everything I said in that video still stands. If you don't know anything about the Loas and the Orishas and about Voodoo and Santeria, if you're not willing to do any type of research about these religions, leave it alone. My opinion about that still stands. I don't care who you think your grandma is or your grandma was or your ancestors was. If you don't know nothing about it, leave it alone. You. So, I'm going to give you a lesson about um, Papa Legba. And this is coming from the Voodoo Hoodoo spell book by Denise Alvarez. This will probably be the thumbnail. Because then you still going to get in the comments and be like, what's the name of that book? Where that book come from? What's the name of that book? Okay. Oh, that's upstairs. So, we're going to go into this. I'm I'm busy. No, you can't. Not right now, okay? Cause I'm I'm busy. Can you come back? Okay, thank you. Here, go in here. Go in your house. I knew that was gonna happen as soon as I got started. Stay in there, please. Oh, um, okay. So. Uh, the way this book teaches, it's going to go into the name of the Loa, the name of the Arisha. It's going to give you a comparison and kind of a contrast between uh, Haitian uh, voodoo and a little bit of Santeria. So it says, in Haitian voodoo, as well as New Orleans voodoo, because Haitian voodoo and New Orleans voodoo is practice two different ways. It's two different things. In the majority, you don't even understand that. Okay? Let me go back. In Haitian voodoo, as well as New Orleans voodoo, Papa Legba is the intermediary between the spirits and humanity. He is the most important loa because he stands at a spiritual crossroad and grants or denies permission to speak with the spirits of Guinea. In, in New Orleans, the gates of Guinea are considered to be the portal to the afterworld. Legba is believed to speak all human languages. He is always the first and last spirit invoked in any ceremony because his permission is needed for any communication between humans and the Loas. He opens and closes the gates to the spirit world. Legba is petitioned to remove obstacles and open the doors to opportunities. In Yerba, Elegua is mostly associated with Papa Legba because both deities share the role of the god of the crossroads. Legba also shares similarities to Arumila, the Orisha of prophecy, who taught mankind how to use the mighty oracle Ifa. Legba, Elegua, and Eshu are similar, but they are not the same spirits. 
Papa Lengba usually appears as an old man on a crutch or with a cane wearing a broad brimmed straw hat and smoking a pipe or sprinkling water. The dog and rooster are sacred to him. Because of his position as gatekeeper between the worlds of the living and the mysteries, he is often identified with St. Peter, who holds a comparable position in the Catholic tradition. He is also depicted in Haiti as St. Lazarus or St. Anthony. Legba's wife's name is Ajesi. A in urban mythology, a legwa is an orisha associated with opening the ways or crossroads as well. Often depicted as a child or a small man, he is a playful trickster god. Worshippers often place a cement head with a metal spike in the top and cowrie shells for eyes and mouth as a representation of a legwa behind their front door. He is believed to protect the entryway and prevent harm from entering the home. Receiving a consecrated Alegua head is part of the Santeria initiation known as the Warriors. Alegua is the messenger of the Orishas and guardian of the doors. Without him, nothing can be accomplished. He is Child aspect is liking to the Catholic saint El Nino de, Ocho, de Atoche. Legba and Alegua are said to like candy, toys, and coconut as offerings or anything children would enjoy. In return, they help people overcome various um, problems. And they do have the signal which is the, uh, I'm not into uh, voodoo, so I'm not into drawing, um, you know, these signals, but they do have it. And I'm sure that that one is associated with Legba and Alegba. Now, like I have told you people before, these are my Alekes. I have been um, initiated in Santeria, and this is my um, B for Elegua. Okay, I did receive these through my uh, first initiation. I have been initiated into Santeria, and I have also uh, received the first hand of Ifa. I do not practice voodoo Haitian voodoo and the majority of you people that follow me y'all don't either okay if you have not been initiated you do not have godparents you do not have someone who has been initiated to train you and teach you you're not practicing either now there are a lot of us out here who practice what is considered a uh, hoodoo because that is something that, you know, you can learn and, and you pick up from maybe other people that practice or whatever. But that is totally different from being initiated into one of these African uh, traditional or uh, Haitian uh, religions. Okay, because this is real. And I want to say this and I, I don't want to offend um, any of my Caucasian followers, but your ancestors did not practice Haitian voodoo. Okay. Because the reason why Haitians even started practicing voodoo was to get the white people. That was their way of fighting. Voodoo was their way of taking back their country because the white people had came there and was, you know, attempting to 
or had taken Haiti from them, the French. So you may have had ancestors in Haiti. You may have French ancestors who lived in Haiti, but uh, I will bet you a dollar to a donut that your ancestors did not practice traditional Haitian voodoo. Because at that time, the Haitians were doing everything they could to fight white people. That's just part of their culture. And you, if you read anything about Haitian voodoo, the Haitians were very upset about being enslaved. And it is in their history that slavery is one thing that they will never forgive. So if the Haitians are not forgiving the white people for enslaving them, do you really think that they would trust you with the mysteries of their religion? I mean, just seriously think about it. Because I had someone leave a comment on my video and say, well, I'm white, but my my ancestors are, um, my, my ancestors practice this religion. How? How did they? How were they able to do that? When the Haitians had major hatred and a very unforgiving spirit when it came to slavery. Now, black Americans... We are different. You know, we are more forgiving, you know, because we have not endured a lot of the things that our ancestors had to endure. We didn't endure that type of pain. Like we may have, you know, read books and seen movies. And of course, those movies affect us, but we haven't dealt with that pain on a serious level because we've always been free and I'm sorry but there are some things that I'm just not willing to give to everybody I'm just not going to do that because I've talked to I was adopted by my mother was older when she adopted me she was already in her 50s, and I was five when she um, adopted me. Now, she was born in 1917, so you can imagine what she has been through from 1917 up until the time when she passed away in 2011. And some of the stories that she told me about picking cotton and, you know, working as a domestic worker for Caucasian people and, you know, just jobs that she had to take in the way that she was treated, even driving from Louisiana to California because her and my dad moved out here to, you know, to California from Louisiana. He got a job out here on the Southern Pacific Railroad and, you know, this was supposed to be California. Uh, there was a migration from the South to, you know, California for a lot of people. And this was their out from just being so poor and, you know, not having decent jobs in the South. But the stories that she told me just about them driving from Louisiana to California you know, only being able to drive during the day, not being able to go to certain restaurants. And if they did, they had to go through the back and having problems um, renting hotel rooms, having to pull over at rest stops and sleep in the car because, you know, they couldn't even get a hotel room. And you think your ancestors out here trying to do the same thing that we doing? No, you're. I'm sorry, but you're not 
going to be able to prove that to me. And I don't care how you want to sing Kumbaya and forget about what our ancestors went through. I don't. And I don't think our ancestors do either. So there's no way in the world, not now one of your ancestors would ever sit on the table with one of mine. That just ain't going to happen. And I'm going to be real. It's not going to happen. I don't care who you are. I don't care where your fam family is from. I don't care what you think your lineage is. You and your ancestors will never sit on the table with mine. Now, we can break bread together. I can sit down with you and have a meal, but you will never, your ancestors and my ancestors will never sit at the table together and eat and, and, and uh, honor and all that kind of, no, that's out for me. That will never, ever happen. Not in this lifetime or the next. So just be careful about what you believe, what you do. Do some research. Find out who your ancestors were. For real, for real. Find out who your people were. Who, who, who you come from. Where you come from. And just because you come from Louisiana don't mean that you have a lineage to these African and Haitian religions. You don't see us out there river dancing. In, in in wearing kilts and stuff. So why now do you want to practice voodoo and hoodoo and, and all of this kind of stuff? Ask yourself why you want to do it. I'm not telling you not to do it, but I'm ask, telling you to ask yourself why. And you can get in them comments and act as crazy if, as you want to, because if I don't like your comment, I will delete it. And there are certain words that you can use that will not even show up. So, y'all have fun in them comments and um, come back later on tonight so we can have a real serious conversation about Papa Legba, Haitian, Haitian voodoo, Haitian voodoo. <laughs> y'all have fun I love y'all leave some comments here so we will have something to uh, talk about later on tonight I will be back and let me show y'all again the book is and this is another one No, nah, let me stop because I don't want, I definitely don't want that to be the thumbnail. Okay, so I will talk to you guys later on this evening. I love you. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>